What's happening, guys? My name is Adam, a.k.a. Speedy Spectrum, and here is my 50 facts about Pikmin 2. Before I start the video, I just want to acknowledge some of the comments made on my 50 facts list of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. I want to thank everyone who put in their two cents. Hopefully, this video will be a little better and more thought out. So, without further ado, let's begin. Number 1. Pikmin 2 was released on April 29, 2004 in Japan. It would soon follow in North America, Europe, and Australia. The Wii remake would be released in Japan on March 12, 2009, but interestingly, it wouldn't appear in North America until 2012, near the end of the Wii's lifespan. Number 2. When you hit the L button on the title screen, the Pikmin disperse and spell out Nintendo. You can also press the X and Y buttons to summon a red Bulborb and iridescent Flint Beetle, respectively. Number 3. Olimar's name is an imperfect anagram of Mario's name. Similarly, Louie's name is derived from Luigi's name. Number 4. In Pikmin 2, Olimar is voiced by Kazumi Totaka, who also voices Yoshi and has composed several Nintendo games. We'll get more into that later. Number 5. Much like in the first game, each onion was originally going to be found dormant, and they had their own boot-up cutscene. Number 6. In Super Mario Galaxy, one of the planets in the Space Junk Galaxy bears a striking resemblance to the Hokotate ship. Number 7. If you look closely, the co-pilot's cockpit in the golden version of the ship has a sofa and a television for the president. Ah, the life of luxury. Number 8. The Awakening Wood was originally going to be called the Forest of Awakening. This makes sense seeing as how it's the same area as the Forest of Hope from Pikmin 1. Number 9. The Hole of Beasts is located in the exact spot where the Extraordinary Bolt was in Pikmin 1. Number 10. Starting on Day 31, Beady Longlegs will appear in the perplexing pool in front of the starting area. It will drop several one pellets upon being defeated. Number 11. Within sublevel 2 of Glutton's Kitchen, there is a piece of Chiyogami paper. When walking on top of it, it rustles. In the Wii remake, when a yellow Pikmin is thrown from the Chiyogami paper, it will be thrown much higher and will fall more slowly. Number 12. The music which plays in the submerged castle is very similar to the track Cave of the Past, which is the final dungeon in Earthbound. This is appropriate considering both of the bosses in these caves are supernatural beings and are seemingly invincible at first. Number 13. Speaking of the Water Wraith, its Japanese name is Ame Bouzu, which translates to Candy Baldhead. This is perhaps a reference to the majority of treasures in the cave being candies and sweets. Number 14. There are small insects called Ujadani that can be found on specific days in certain locations in the Wistful Wild. They can be attacked by Pikmin and have a high chance of dropping sprays. Number 15. The Wistful Wild was originally going to be called the Land of Promise as seen in the early English script left inside the game. Number 16. The Segmented Crobster is the only regular boss to not be found in the Pikmin 2 Challenge Mode. It is also the only boss that Louie cannot be seen with. Number 17. The Hole of Heroes is the only cave that has more sublevels than treasures. Number 18. The Japanese name for Raging Longlegs is Zo no Ashi, which literally translates to Elephant Feet. This is apt considering how massive its feet are. Number 19. The Dream Den is located where the first ship part of the SS Dolphin, the main engine, is found in Pikmin 1. Fittingly, the starting area is where you fight Emperor Bulblax in the final trial. Number 20. The Emperor Bulblaxes in Pikmin 2 are much smaller than the final boss in Pikmin 1. Their hide isn't mossy, but their backside is still green and slimy, which could indicate they are younger than the one fought in the first Pikmin game. Number 21, the Empress Bulblax bears resemblance to a real-life Queen Termite. Number 22, the Man at Legs bears resemblance to the Martians from War of the Worlds. Both have a robotic and arachnid nature, as well as unproportionally thin legs. 
Number 23. The man at legs' scientific name is Pseudoarachnia navaronia. The word navaronia is most likely a reference to the famous novel The Guns of Navarone, referring to the man at legs' means of attack. Number 24. The Titan Dweevil may be designed after the Japanese spider crab, which is the largest leg span of all crab species. The Japanese spider crab is also closely related to the decorator crab, which collects surrounding material and attaches it to its carapace. This is fitting considering the weapons the Titan Dweevil uses. Number 25. If the current captain has 20 of each Pikmin under his control, they will sing Ai no Uta, the theme song that was used in the Japanese commercials for the first Pikmin game. When in a cave, if there are no treasures left in the current sublevel, the Pikmin will sing the first six notes of the game's leitmotif, which plays on the title screen. This also occurs in challenge mode. Number 26. There are two known places where Totaka's song can play in Pikmin 2. The first is after the treasure is tallied upon leaving a cave. If you've collected all of the treasures, confetti will drop, indicating that you've completed it. And if you wait 3 minutes and 50 seconds, Totaka's song will play. The second instance occurs when you are about to enter a sublevel in a cave. If for whatever reason the game cannot be saved, a warning screen will show up saying so. After waiting here for 3 minutes and 45 seconds, Totaka's song will start playing. It should be noted this cannot be triggered on the Wii Remake, since it doesn't use memory cards. Number 27. The leader's faces on the main two-player battle screen will change depending on the current score leader. The leading captain will smile and the trailing captain will be angry. Number 28. The Angle Maze battle map features a raging long legs in one of its variations, making it the only battle map to feature a boss. Number 29. The Spotty Bull Bear was one of four enemies that were planned but ultimately removed for the roulette wheel function in Pikmin 2's two-player battle mode, along with the Antenna Beetle and the Fiery and Caustic Dweevils. Number 30. There are two Bulborb species that were cut from the final version of Pikmin 2. These blue and yellow Bulborbs would have given each basic Pikmin type a Bulborb of the same color. Number 31. In the Pikmin 2 prototype, Louis strangely seems to refer to the hairy Bulborb as a bird in his recipe notes, saying things such as to pluck the feathers instead of the hair, or mentioning that the foil should protect the bird from scorching. It's possible that in the game's very early stages, the hairy Bulborb was going to be a bird-like creature. Number 32. By pressing the Z button on the Piclopedia, you can petrify the enemies using the Ultra Bitter Spray. Number 33. The Fiery Bulblax's Piclopedia icon is an 80 by 80 image. This size is only used for bosses. This could mean that at some point during development, the Fiery Bulblax could have been a boss. Number 34. In an official Japanese poll, Bulbmen and their juveniles were ranked as the most popular Bulborb enemy in Pikmin 2, even above the dwarf Red Bulborb and Red Bulborb. Number 35. The decorated cannon beetle's boulders act much like the red turtle shells from the Mario Kart series, in that both home in on their targets. In addition, both the creature and shells share the same red coloration. This same similarity applies to the armored cannon beetle larva and the green turtle shells. Number 36. The whistling heard when Gatling Groink's pellets are flying is a modified version of the same whistle in Super Mario Sunshine when bullet bills are fired from cannons. Number 37. In Pikmin 2, swooping snitch bugs are able to grab Pikmin in midair. Number 38. The bumbling snitch bugs design could possibly be a reference to stereotypical Japanese cat burglars. The hands look like gloves and the abdomen resembles the typical green bag the burglars always carry around. Number 39. The careening dirigi bugs bear a strong resemblance to the Eosapiens from the documentary Alien Planet and also from Wayne Barlow's book Expedition. Both these creatures float using gas-filled sacks on their heads. They effectively hunt down their targets and also have generally similar body shapes. Number 40. The careening dirigibug also resembles the Brazilian tree hopper, a real-world insect that feeds on the underside of leaves. 
Number 41, toady bloisters are based on nudibranches, which are sea slugs that are very similar in appearance. Number 42, the skitter leaf resembles the leaves on a magnolia acuminata tree. Number 43, although honey wisps cannot technically be killed, according to Pikmin 2's files, they still have a health value of 99,999. Number 44. Interestingly, the patterns on the Mamuda's wrists are the same as the patterns on the onions. Number 45. Breadbugs exhibit behavior typical of real-world ferrets, which are known to take random items and drag them into burrows or other enclosed areas. Number 46. In the game's files, there are unused placeholder graphics from the arcade game Mappy, Interestingly, the game was made by Namco Bandai, who also worked with Nintendo on other games, including Star Fox Assault and Mario Kart Arcade GP. Number 47. Many of the game's treasures were changed when the game was localized in different regions. Many of the treasures in the original Japanese game were based on Japan-only brands and cultural references. These were changed to more appropriate brands and references in other regions. Number 48. The Cosmic Archive Treasure is a Famicom Disk System disc card for Nazu no Murasame Jo, later localized as the Mysterious Murasame Castle. Number 49. In the Japanese version of Pikmin 2, the silencer is worth 666 Pokos. In all other releases, it is worth 670 Pokos. Since the number 666 is associated with death in Christianity, it was likely changed to remove this connection in the West. Number 50. There are some unused treasures in Pikmin 2's game data. Some of them include the discs for the Japanese versions of four GameCube games, Pikmin 1, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, Luigi's Mansion, and Super Mario Sunshine. Well, that's it for 50 Facts About Pikmin 2. Stay tuned for my next play and dub. See you guys next time.